and uh, kind of as you mentioned with uh, Freeze Mage, you know, the fact that Brandeis doesn't have a warrior in their lineup, Laval is free to play a deck like this, and there's really not that many bad matchups left in, in the format for Freeze Mage afterwards. Yeah, Brandeis looks like they're throwing out a Mech Mage, so it's going to be Freeze Mage versus Mech Mage. This is a really tough matchup for the Mech Mage. Yeah, it's, I mean, because Mech Mage is naturally aggressive, um, you're going to want to get the early board and rely on Burn to finish it, but Freeze Mage has gotten just so good. Their, their effective tools um, are just so dominant on controlling the board now. Even cards like Forgotten Torch, the new League of Explorers card, it's so good against Shredder. You don't have to Fireball or Frostbolt that anymore. In fact, um, not only do you kill it off, but you add another card to your deck. And that, that's another tool for Fatigue Mage, or sorry, for Freeze Mage if it goes to Fatigue stages of games. Uh, where because it, it's going to draw so much of its deck, sometimes the games often do go to the last card. Now, here's a question I have for you guys. You know, with with uh, League of Explorers coming out, not only have we been seeing Freeze Mage have better tools in terms of just its utility, but they also have the option to run Reno Jackson now. I mean, you just mentioned fatigue. They can get so low in their deck that even though they're playing multiples of cards, they only have like two or three cards left in their deck, and then Reno can heal them for you know 29 points of damage after an ice block. Uh, what, what, like, how often have you guys been seeing that? Because I have, I've run into it a couple times so far. I've been seeing players really split on this decision. Some people think it's very good. Some people think it's too inconsistent. You know, what's been your experiences with it? My experiences with Reno is that uh, I love it when I play it. I hate it when I face it. It's just one of those <laughs> exactly, things where yeah. it's like, I, I actually thought I, I legitimately checkmated a Freeze Mage once because I had Brand Bronzebeard, which came out this past week, and I played Lothab, and I really anticipated that. I was like, well, Freeze Mage can't do anything. Can't play Secrets, can't play Board Stall with Freezes, can't even, you know, kill off and remove anything. Uh, only had to play Minions. And they played Reno Jackson, survived, and then killed people. Yep. So, uh, th there <laughs> are ways about, right? for them to get out. Yeah. TJ, I know you love Reno Jackson. I have never played against a Reno Jackson deck, and they haven't gotten the full heal. I'm waiting for the day when someone has two copies of a card left, but <laughs> that card well, is a doozy. Sometimes in matches where you know Reno's not going to have a huge impact, you maybe even just drop him as a 4-6 for 6 for yeah, I, six sure, yeah. I played on, on I played Reno for basically the first week after it came out, and that, I ran into that situation a couple times. Yeah. I personally have not played a Reno and had two copies of a card left in my deck, but all four times I've played against it so far, my opponent right. has played it and had two copies of a card left yeah. in their deck. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a wonderful feeling. Sometimes if you're playing against really aggressive decks, or even the opportunity, like you have Frost Nova Doomsayer and your hand is just really bad oh, afterwards, but you kind of need some board presence <laughs> afterwards to fight back for you. Reno does the same as healing. Like, say you're at 20 health. It heals you for 10 if you're able to fight back a couple turns and, and, and use his body. So... Don't, don't feel like you have to hold them on to him to get the 25 heal. Just playing him sometimes on curve Yeah, might be the best play. You never know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, say you gain 10 from him. You just gain yeah. 10 from a 4-6 anti-kill yeah. bot. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, in this case, uh, I don't know if there's Reno Jackson in. Usually the way you can see Reno Jackson is based off of the Freeze Mage draw cards. If they have Novice Engineer, Loot Hoarders, and... You know, sometimes even like Cold Light Oracle, like all these kinds of things really stretch them really far because they need to diversify their draw in order to get that Reno Jackson consistent. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, however, I do think this might be just a traditional Freeze Mage based off some of their initial cards. And yeah, we talked about how Mech Mage can sometimes struggle against this deck. So just talk about what they need to do to win. And the first thing is they need to try and dodge board clears because Mech Mages can tend to run out of steam really quickly. And then they need to close up the game with Burn, like Dan said. So... Uh, they need lots of burn spells or cards like Dr. Boom, Archimedes Antonitis, after they've already established a lot of damage and a lot of board, which, I mean, sounds kind of easy when you play against mech mages. Sometimes you, it feels like they have all the burn in the world, but it's pretty tough against Freeze Mage. Yeah, I mean, the mech mage is not a very subtle deck. It pretty much likes to just start playing seven and attacking. But something that's really interesting to note here is that Brandeis has two copies of Arcane Intellect in yeah. their mech mage deck. I mean, this is something that we do not see very often. Uh, so the fact that they have this, that may be the kind of card that can give them a slight edge in this matchup, help them find those key burn spells, yeah. Yeah. and finish this game before Laval University's thinking that they can. You know, I'm wondering if maybe even the Mech Mage has that Flame Waker variant of it, because what sometimes they want we want to go a little bit halfway, where they want to have some spell synergies, they have cards like Arcane Intellect and Sources of Repentance anyways. Uh, maybe they want to go for half Tempo, half Mech Mage, and hybridize eventually. Uh, um, that's a good point to make. I mean, you know, in the past, we often saw them just run Mad Scientist and Mirror Entity, but with so much Freeze Mage running in, around, 
mirror entity is a major liability versus Doomsayer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then even just recently, kind of a major liability just versus a lot of the smaller minions people are playing. I mean, Druid got an Assassin. That's a great one. A lot of decks run Leper Gnomes and, 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 you know, Haunted Creepers and stuff. Those yeah. aren't great mirror entity targets. Um, so it looks like that has been cut, and I would totally agree with you. If they're running Arcane Intellect, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Flame Waker in here. Yeah, especially with all the spare parts as well. Clockwork mm -hmm. Gnomes, Tinkertown Technician we see as well. They can get a lot of value out of that. All right. Well, you do see that Ice Barrier number two is drawn. So that does mean that if Laval is playing Reno, they can pull out the Ice Block and get one <laughs> step closer to it. However, this is still looking a little bit awkward because they're, you know, you don't have exactly the cleanest removal of stuff like Fireball on a 4-4 when you know that there's going to be bigger targets like Mechanical Yeti and everything coming out just what as easily the do. following turn. So you have to be really careful with what you do here. I wouldn't be surprised to just go for Ice Barrier number two, just kind of stalling and waiting so that you can eventually Blizzard into Flame Strike. But uh, Laval also does want to weigh like how much damage they want to take now versus later. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of an interesting spot that's been that Laval's been into as well. I mean, they have plenty of ways to stall the board and continue to stall it, but what they don't have is ways to pick up extra cards. They're kind of at the mercy of their draws right now. And if you look at turn six and turn seven, they've pretty much committed to Blizzard and Flamestrike on these turns, or maybe even Blizzard and then Fireball Definitely. Doomsayer. Uh, so you look at this board, when are they going to have time to play card draw spells even if they draw them? Turn eight is like the soonest we're looking at. Yeah, you can board sweep for days, but if you don't find ways to, you know, draw into the ways to actually win the game, especially with cards like Arcane do. Intellect, this mech mage do isn't going to run out of steam as quickly as some others are, so... Uh, they might be in some trouble if they don't pick up some some of those tools. Yeah, certainly not with Arcane Intellect. Not to mention, there's also the spare parts, which can be equivalent of damage, either converting to Fireball or, if he does have Flame Waker, converting it to two damage. I now, this, wonder. you have to see, like, that that play. The Mad Sign is running into your Tinker Town Technician and the, the Hero Power. That's, that's telegraphing Blizzard. Oh, so yeah. in a lot of ways, even though you feel like, yeah, maybe I just <laughs> kind of go a little bit aggressive here, I think you just take this turn to develop the Arcane into like, yeah. And I think they're discussing the merits of like even using Time Rewinder on one of these guys. On the and, Town Technician. Yeah, and just looking at what you want to do with all these cards. I mean, you know, you look at this spot, like how often is your opponent realistically bluffing here? Like, it's just, why would they bluff here? It's like, it, it's so unbelievably rare that's going to happen. Even if they are bluffing, you still make headway on the board. I mean, you still dealt eight damage, and your opponent doesn't have a blizzard if they're bluffing. Like, yeah, oh, okay, that looks <laughs> fine for me either way. Definitely mm. supposed to play around it in this situation. Well, two blizzards give him, or sorry, give them at Laval University a lot of stall. But again, uh, this this makes me think that it's not Reno Jackson because two blizzards is not very common in it. Maybe you run a Kona Cold instead. I wonder. Yeah, a lot of people have been favoring the Kona Cold just for the early removal, like yeah. with Secret Paladin been creeping in. Sometimes you just need a better curve to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, it just gives you more flexibility as the game goes on to fit in more spells later on in the game. Sure. If you absolutely need to freeze and absolutely need to play a secret or something along those lines, then uh, it can really help you fit those curves. And we see another key card for this matchup drawn for Brandeis in the last turn, that's Lotheb. Not only that, but reversing switch ain't too bad either. Your opponent freezes your board and plays a Doomsayer. Oh, yeah, that's you right. Just, you just make it a 7-0. Yeah. Which what? dies. <laughs> <laughs> when, when minions have zero health, like they die. What to do? What to do? I can fix anything. Yeah, that reversing switch is such a big deal. Anything. Right on the money with that one. And now he's just paving the way for when Dr. Boom comes out on the following turn. Those Boom Bots are also equally threatening because uh, if the health got so low, you wouldn't get the Ice Block activation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this turn for Laval, I mean, this looks like a great Blizzard turn, but it also looks like an okay Flame Strike turn. You know, I, I look at this spot and I wonder, uh, you know, it, are they going to be able to just ride this out simply because they have so much board sweep? I mean, that's definitely a possibility as well. You know, uh, at some point, Mech Mage's hand stops having just a ton of little guys in it. You know, it will fill up with spare parts. You'll have excess burn spells. You'll have those one or two big cards like them, uh, like Doctor Boom. You know, suddenly it's it's just not looking as good anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. And you can see right now. I mean, the quality of their hand isn't fantastic. They really only have two creatures. The rest are just spare parts and burn spells and. A lot of times yeah. you need to save those burn spells for later on in the game to actually be able to finish the game. And uh, so the I'm cards that they do have wow. are high quality with Dr. Boom and Lothep. Pass. That is bad news for Laval. That's free Dr. Boom development. Very easily set up. 
One of the things that you're also concerned about is, you know, how much you load up the board. But in this case, I think Dr. Boom is by far your strongest play here. Well, there mer are there merits to Lothep in this spot? Even? What like, if to you just do? play the Lothep here, what to do? You know, when your opponent kind of pings their Acolyte, maybe you get the sense that uh, if I shut off maybe a top deck uh, Ross Nova, I'm sorry, like a top deck Blizzard, top deck Kona Cold, yeah. Flame Strike, you, you could just push a lot of damage with it. You know, how beneficial is the Dr. Boom versus over the spot? I think I'd go for Dr. Boom here because it's on her mostly. Yeah. Uh, but certainly some considerations to this turn. Yeah, I think one of the there's, there's a couple of things that you're really concerned about. The first is that playing Lotheb, does that immediately set up a way for you to kill the following to pop the ice The second is what can they do in response to Lotheb? And on eight mana, they can they can actually have a reasonable response with Frost Nova yeah. and effectively negate what Lotheb bought you with a turn. So Doc and also Doctor Boom is gets harder to play as time goes on. So I I think this is a perfectly reasonable response. Yeah. We've see, I've seen some Freeze Mage or some play in the past with other types of decks besides Mech Mage where you can be conservative with Dr. Boom because of the fact that, like Dan mentioned, those Boom Bots will go through Ice Block Ooh. if they're popped on a board sweep turn. So All right. I just don't think this is one of them. Five damage is about average for these Boom Bots. And yep. now the Doomsayer comes out, gives you lots of flexibility. You can reversing switch. Now... This is a case where you have to, again, be very cautious to Lotha because you might feel like, yeah, I want to preserve Dr. Boom. I, I, I can Lotha, and I have 10 points of burn afterwards. But this is the turn that the Alex draws. Oh, so if you go for the Lotha, you might realistically give up your counterplay with Lotha to answer a, a two-turn kill from the, the Freeze Mage. Yeah, and uh, that's something that comes with, exper with experience in playing Freeze Mage is you know, knowing those power turns. You can you can feel like uh, Alex Straza is not as do. likely since they haven't drawn that many cards, but you know it's just something that Ooh. they're going to do and they're going to play it. Yeah. Oh man! I mean, they, they feel like the Lotheb is is really the call here, and I can't blame them either. I mean, look at the swing and damage that's being provided this board. They are going to pop Ice Block this turn. Outside of Frost Nova, there's no way this is getting shut down. I guess Kona Cold can shut it down as well, but they saw two Blizzards at this point. It's often a really big indicator that Kona Cold isn't there. Right. But I still. I'm not. I'm still hesitant to play it. On it, it just it's just the Alex draws turn. You can always debate cards like Emperor Thorson. Uh, you can always debate even like the Antonidas minions being played, or even Frost Nova to a certain extent. But in this case, you're asking to to solely get punished by the Alex Straza because then their hands forced. Like Freeze Mage here has to Alex Straza. They uh, if they play the Antonidas, they're looking to get popped, uh, and from that point on, they don't even have a guarantee of having a second ice block. Yeah. The and other, the, well, the other thing, too, is I look at uh, Brandeis' hand. Do they have an opportunity to do something other than make this kind of play? I mean, where does their hand go afterwards if they don't pop a block next turn? That's a good point. It's Fair pretty enough. much uh, they're sort of all in on ending the game very quickly because they are they are running out of resources. Despite having their arcane intellect, the one thing they do have going for them is that's quite a bit of burn with Fireball plus double Frostbolt in the hand. Is. They can surprise with quite a bit of damage in a single turn, and they do have the ability to pop the block next turn. And also, Laval, even if they play Alex Draza this turn, they really don't have many. They have Flame Strike, but other than that, no sweep effects. They can't close out the game next turn uh, with the burn that they have in their hand. But it gives them an out. Alex though. Kill. It does give them an out. It yes. feels like if they time Lothab for after Alex Draza. Then all of a sudden they buy one more turn. Not to mention that they could even stall because they have like Frostbolt to buy time uh, on the Alex Draws to, to make do. sure it can't get additional what damage. And it's not like they were running out of minion damage either. I can understand completely that you want to preserve Dr. Boom's damage, but even having cards like Goblin Blast Mage followed up with Burn and a Time Rewinder on the Blast Mage, I mean, you have time insane the damage. Yeah. They get the pop block and the time rewind on the low. Oh, level. you're right. Time rewind yeah. on the low. <laughs> that's a, they have the mana to do this, though. I mean, that's really Actually, that's completely here. it. We, so we ignored one, two, that completely. Three, I mean, they, they can't pop the block and replay the low them. They don't have that option. They have to do one or the other. And when your opponent has just Alex Straza you in this spot, do you feel oh, comfortable God. not low them or not cross molding this Alex Straza here? I mean, this is, this is a gigantic oh, risk to take if you declare. Uh, that you're not going to do anything about this. So they're going to frostbolt the Alex Straza instead and say, we don't believe that you have 15 damage in hand. Yeah. And uh, I, this is looking like a good scenario to me. The thing about it is the ball, you know, one or two draws can easily change this. Yeah. 
I mean, a fireball, a fireball draw would be it, but it is going to oh, be an goodness. ice block. But that's, like ice block. Yeah, that's a good pickup. It allows them to stay alive for another turn. That's, that's not just a good pickup. That's a great pickup. They get to draw two cards here. So now you're looking at Ice Lance, um, you, uh, another, another fireball. fireball. They do have a Kona Cold oh, in addition oh. to Blizzards. I mean, well, they, they may have found a way to climb out of this game just now. I think the Kona Cold might not be as big consequence because they're still going to be at the one health for the remainder of till they unless they have just a, a heal bot out of nowhere and i would anticipate that they want to uh use fireball to just probably get some damage in here immediately yeah because then they could still top deck afterwards too i mean let's say yeah. they draw another uh card draw spell it gives them one more chance to find the right card yeah mm -hmm. so at this point how, i mean how do they stay alive for those multiple turns they need to just go for the win i think yeah, coming up on the next turn but it's uh, it's now or never. Now the time you yeah. both have is pretty sick. Now the time yeah. rewinder is disgusting looking. Yeah. I mean, this is you cannot get a better situation than this. I don't think. If this was the three turn or three and a half turn plan from Brandeis, that's very impressive. Yeah, they can also once again frost both the Alex Shraza to get rid of that option. I mean, it's likely that they uh, might not have been able to get through it anyway with that. Well, I guess just a frost bolt plus a ping would have done. Let's just punch, punch it too. Just punch it with the Doctor Bill. Yeah. You know, at this point, how much is the Doctor Room really worth? That's true, yeah. yeah. You're yeah. playing that load that that's basically the trump card. I mean, I guess they could consider what happens if they play a heal bot. Because um, then they wouldn't have enough burn if they traded. Well, I guess they would if they played the Tinker Town. That's yeah, so great. They, they, they want another time reminder. <laughs> Just like, in case they Reno here. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> no, because this is the thing. Like, people are like, ah, oh, Lothab. I I've been in the situation a few times this past week. They're like, ah, oh, Lothab. And it's only Reno Jacks. You just float five mana because you're like, oh, I win no matter what. There's yeah. nothing you can do. Suddenly surprise Reno, and you're like, oh, crap. We should have played something on the board. Yeah. Yep. I, I would venture to say that with uh, Freeze Mage and with Rogue kind of climbing back into the meta game, that Lothab is going to start to creep up in a lot of these aggressive decks again. Mm hmm. Makes a lot of sense, and uh, that that's going to be it. It's two icebox gone. They can ping Acolyte for something, but uh, even if they draw Reno Jackson, and the very low chance they have it, because they do have Clint Cole and two Blizzards. Yeah, they needed to draw... Um, oh, they I just needed to draw Reno, like, right there. <laughs> yeah, they, they needed to draw it right off the bat. That's going to do it. Brandi is going to tie this series up at one game apiece. Wow. Aggressive play with Mech Mage, supplemented by Arcane Intellect. You know, looking at the final cards that they had, those last ones weren't very consequential, but something that really was was having all those options on the turns that they had them. It allowed them to, to use their foresight to set up those kinds of turns.